Have you ever been to France? Some of you for sure have and have unforgettable memories from that journey. And even if you haven't been there, you most likely know much more about this country than most countries in the world. What is the first thing comes to your mind when somebody mentions France? Many people would say rich history, a unique and charming language, and one of the best cuisines in the world. However, for most people, the first thing that comes to mind is the French capital, Paris. Going through all the reasons for it would take too long, so let's just mention a few. Beautiful architecture, a lot of museums and works of art, rich and dynamic history, picturesque gardens and parks, charming restaurants, interesting people, iconic landmarks like the Eiffel Tower and Disneyland, and many, many other landmarks. All of these make Paris one of the most iconic and beautiful cities in the whole world. However, today we won't be talking about Paris, because France is much more than its capital. What I want to show you is how beautiful France is in its other regions and provinces, and today we will focus on cities and take you through the 10 most beautiful cities in this amazing country. Whether you're planning a trip to France, exploring the country, or simply enjoy discovering new and interesting places, stay with us until the end of this video. Our journey begins from the Atlantic Ocean. From a technical standpoint, Bordeaux isn't situated directly facing the ocean. Instead, it lies along the Garonne River. Despite not being directly on the ocean, Bordeaux's close proximity to the mouth of the Garonne River and the city's inclusion on the World's Heritage List due to its port qualify it as a maritime city. However, when discussing Bordeaux, neither the sea nor the ocean is the primary association with this city. Bordeaux is renowned for its wine yards, that extend across the Aquitaine region, often earning the title of the Jewel of Aquitaine. The wider urban area is often considered one of the most attractive places to live in France. The city boasts well-preserved neoclassical architecture, lively streets and beautiful landscapes. If you find yourself in Bordeaux, here are a few places worth visiting. Place de la Bourse, Grand Theatre de Bordeaux, St. Andrew's Cathedral. And of course, do not overlook the opportunity to go to a wine tour to one of the neighboring vineyards. If you have a keen interest in delving into the world of wine, its production and its rich history, there is no better place than La Cité du Vin, a wine museum where you can also discover and reserve one of the numerous wine tours available. We're continuing our journey eastbound from the Atlantic Ocean, along the Garonne River, and we arrived in Toulouse. This city, also situated on the Garonne River, today serves as the center of the European aerospace industry and stands as the largest space center in Europe. Toulouse has a rich history, and it's well known for its art, history, and culture. Toulouse is often affectionately called the Pink City, a nickname stemming from the distinct pinkish-red color of the local bricks used in the construction of many historic buildings. Toulouse is abundant in monuments and structures from different time periods, many of which have been well preserved. This is partially due to the city's fortunate escape from widespread destruction during World War II. Toulouse is also famous for its university, founded in 1229 and ranking among the oldest universities in Europe. Among the three cultural monuments protected on the UNESCO World Heritage List, we recommend visiting two of them in particular. Basilica of saint Cernin, constructed from pinkish bricks between the 11th and 13th century, 
is one of the finest preserved monuments of Romanesque architecture. Canal du Midi, known for connecting the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. The canal flows into Garonne in Toulouse and continues its journey towards the Atlantic. Be sure to take a stroll to Capitol Square, where you can find the magnificent City Hall, which is a monument to neoclassical architecture. Take a walk to the Pont Neuf Bridge, famous for its distinctive feature, where its seven arches differ in length, resulting in an asymmetrical design. And if you prefer the present and the future over the past, make sure to plan some time for the Space City, located just about 5 kilometers or 20 minutes drive on the southeast. And here we are, on the Mediterranean Sea and the third stop of our journey. Founded over 2,500 years ago, Marseille is considered the oldest French city. It was independent for a significant period before becoming part of France under Louis XI. Today, Marseille is the second largest city in France, with over 850,000 people live there. It's also home to the most important and busiest French port, which ranks as the third largest port in Europe. As a result, trade has historically been the driving force of this city. Throughout the centuries, traders and people from many parts of the world have passed through and met here, making Marseille a cosmopolitan city in every sense of the word. For a significant period, this city was listed as one of the most dangerous cities in Europe, leading many tourists to avoid it. Fortunately, this has changed and continues to improve in the last decade. As a result, Marseille is now attracting more tourists who are discovering its other side, brimming with history, culture, and places worth visiting. Nonetheless, it is still recommended to steer clear of the northern parts of the city, as there are limited attractions for visitors in that area. Selecting just a few places to visit in this city is a challenging task, but here are some notable highlights. The Old Port, founded by the ancient Greeks in 600 BC, is located in the historic center of Marseille. The Pharaoh Palace, built in the 19th century, served as the residence of Napoleon III. The Notre Dame de la Garde Church, situated on a hill above the Old Town, dominates the Marseille landscape and offers a unique and beautiful view of the city. Remarkably, in the vicinity of this hilltop church, you can observe the remnants of old boats. These vessels were traditionally brought to the church for blessings by fishermen before setting out to sea. Situated just 30 kilometers from Marseille, Aix-en-Provence, though considerably smaller, stands among the most visited places in France, especially cherished by art enthusiasts. The city has been a temporary or permanent home to numerous renowned artists where they either lived, worked or briefly resided. The most famous among them is undoubtedly Paul Cézanne, who was born, lived and created here and once said, when you're born there, it's hopeless. Nothing else is good enough. Be sure to have Paul Cézanne Studio on your list of places to visit. The city center is compact, yet teeming with artistic landmarks, creating a labyrinth of art. The main street alone boasts over 100 fountains, earning the city its nickname, the City of a Thousand Fountains. Besides the previously mentioned attractions, make sure to include the following in your list. St. Savoir Cathedral, a Romanesque Gothic church from the 5th century. Granite Museum, featuring works by Paul Cézanne, Pablo Picasso and other famous artists. Alternatively, you can leisurely stroll through the city, 
relax on one of the numerous cafes or restaurants with charming gardens and savor delightful Provencal culinary delights. One compelling fact that could convince some to move to the city is that Aix-en-Provence enjoys an average of 300 sunny days out of 365 in a year. Continuing our journey along the Mediterranean, we arrived in Nice, the largest city on the French Riviera. The French Riviera is renowned for its stunning azure sea, beautiful beaches and charming towns. It boasts a unique climate. It's cooler in the summer than the immediate inland areas and warmer in the winter. As a result, you can hardly go wrong when choosing to visit Nice at any time of the year. First and foremost, Nice is known for the Promenade des Anglais, or English Promenade, which stretches along the coast and covers the entire Bay of Nice. The standout structure on the Promenade is the Negresco Hotel, a luxurious establishment with a rich history built in 1912. This top-class hotel also serves as a unique museum where segments of the entire art history of France are displayed. In 1912, another landmark of Nice was built, the Russian Orthodox Church or the Church of St. Nicholas. What are the other most visited attractions in Nice? You'll discover a wide array of attractions, including museums like the Museum of Fine Arts and the Museum of Modern Art. But simply walking along the streets with truly interesting and colorful building facades will make you stay unique and you'll understand why Nice is called the jewel of the French Riviera. And of course, you'll find refreshment, relaxation and entertainment on the beach and in one of the many cafes and restaurants. Approximately 80 kilometers from Marseille, on the left bank of the Rhone River, lies Avignon, the city that could be described as a place where a medieval fairy tale took place. The old town of Avignon is encircled by walls and ramparts, with a papal palace dominating its skyline. This imposing structure, boasting over 1,000 rooms, was constructed to serve as the residence for the popes during the 14th century. Within the city walls, narrow streets are lined with medieval buildings characterized by their bright facades, and the entire old town can be seen as a sort of museum. In addition to the Papal Palace, be sure to visit the Avignon Bridge, Initially featuring 22 arches, it fell into disuse after significant damage in the 17th century and now stands with only four arches. Nonetheless, it is a beautiful monument and a symbol of the city. The Tower of Philip the Fair, located on the edge of the old town, was built as a nearly 60 meter high defensive fortress. It stood as a remarkable engineering marvel in its time. And to keep this video from getting too long, here are just a few more places in Avignon to visit. Avignon City Hall, Petit Palace and the Lapidary Museums, Notre Dame de Dome Cathedral, and the Clock Square. Our next destination brings us to the central part of France, near the French Alps, where the Rhône and Seine rivers converge. Here lies Lyon, one of the most underrated cities in France. Lyon offers a distinct ambience compared to the south of France. The city center boasts a 2,000-year history, evident in its prevailing medieval and Renaissance architecture. Don't miss the opportunity to visit the 2,000-year-old amphitheater of the Three Gauls, constructed during Roman times. It once hosted tragedies and comedies, accommodating up to 4,700 people. One of the main attractions in Old Lyon is the maze of hidden passageways, known as Trable, built during the 16th and 17th centuries. 
These are narrow streets and passages between houses and buildings that craftsmen and silk merchants used as shortcuts through the city. Should you choose to explore independently, keep an eye out for lion's head symbols and arrow markers to ensure you're on the right track. With its panoramic view of Lyon, the dominant structure is the Basilica of Notre Dame de Fouvrier. This beautiful church was built in the 19th century in honor of the Virgin Mary, believed to have saved the city from the plague that ravaged Europe in the 17th century. Because it is visible from almost all parts of the city, the Basilica has become a symbol of Lyon and one of the most visited places in the city, attracting over 2 million visitors annually. However, for many French people, Lyon is primarily known as the gourmet capital of France alongside Paris. Renowned chef Paul Bocuse, the first famous chef from Lyon, is considered the pioneer of the Nouvelle Cuisine movement that forever changed French cuisine. He operated as many as five restaurants in Lyon, with his first one, L'Auberge de Pont de Colonge, boasting three Michelin stars. But what's even more popular are local restaurants known as Bouchons, where traditional cuisine is served in an informal and friendly atmosphere. Approximately a two-hour drive east of Lyon, you'll arrive at Lake Annecy, where you'll discover the city of the same name at its northern edge. Nestled in the foothills of the French Alps near the Swiss border, Annecy may initially evoke the impression of being in Switzerland or Austria due to its alpine surroundings. However, it retains a distinct French identity, whatever that may mean to each visitor. Annecy's proximity to Geneva, just about 40 kilometers away, explains the high number of tourists in the city. Many visitors to Geneva opt for a day trip to Annecy. The city is often called the Pearl of French Alps or the Venice of the Alps because it's located in a valley below mountains with canals and bridges crisscrossing the city. Unlike most French cities, Annecy doesn't have one single monument that can be considered the city's emblem. However, that doesn't mean that city lacks landmarks. On the contrary, visitors who decide on a one-day visit to Annecy often say they should have stayed at least one or two days longer. Speaking of tourist attractions, Old Annecy takes the top spot. The entire Old Town is a pedestrian zone with colorful houses, cafes, restaurants and a unique market. Several places in the Old Town that you'll come across include the Chateau, the former Count's Castle, which is now a museum with archaeological artifacts, wooden art pieces and a small aquarium. Additionally, you'll find the Cathedral, Palais du Lille or Island Palace, and be sure to explore one of the six open-air markets. Even if you're not into shopping and haggling, these markets will help you feel the spirit of the city and the people who live here. Traveling from Annecy in the north, initially following the Swiss and then the German border, we reach a city renowned for its unique beauty, born from the fusion of German and French cultures, medieval and modern Europe. Throughout history, especially in the 19th and 20th centuries, Strasbourg periodically belonged to France and then Germany. This historical app and flow of national borders has led to Strasbourg being designated as a symbol and center of the European Union. Alongside Brussels and Luxembourg, it now serves as the administrative hub of the EU. Strasbourg is especially renowned for being home to the European Court of Human Rights, often simply referred to as the Strasbourg Court. Although it suffered considerably during World War II, Strasbourg has preserved a large number of buildings and monuments. 
Take a stroll through the old town, which like Annecy has been transformed into a pedestrian zone, and you'll be captivated by the city's beauty, characterized by an architectural heritage that seamlessly blends medieval, renaissance, romantic, and art nouveau styles. The entire old town is a labyrinth, and tourists often say that you can't walk around the city for long without stopping every minute to take a photo. Strasbourg is the world's first city whose entire old town center is included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Before this, only individual monuments were included on that list. It is hard to single out places to visit in Strasbourg without the list becoming too long. Some of the recommended places include Strasbourg Cathedral, built over three centuries, initially in Romanesque and later in Gothic style. It absolutely dominates the city with its massive spire. Le Petit France, or Little France, a perfectly preserved and maintained old town where urban fishermen and tenors once lived. Rohan Palace, once the resident of the Prince Bishops, it now houses three museums, the Museum of Fine Arts, the Museum of Decorative Arts, and the Archaeological Museum. The Palace of Europe, a modern building constructed in 1977, which serves as the main building of the Council of Europe. Orangery Park, Strasbourg's oldest park, built in the 19th century, which features a small lake and a waterfall. Then St. Paul's Church and many, many other places that I have to leave for you to discover. Now we've reached the end of our list of the most beautiful cities in France. Before we unveil what is the 10th city on the list, I want to express my gratitude to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. While many of you watch us, a significant number still haven't clicked that magic button to subscribe. I understand it might seem like a small action, but it holds immeasurable importance for me. So please take a moment to click subscribe button and the bell after it and become Density subscriber. Your support means a lot. Thank you. As we conclude our list, we found ourselves in the far north of France, in French Flanders, near the Belgian border, in the city of Lille. Lille, a French city with a distinct Flemish charm, is a place where the streets are often bustling with young people, making it stand out compared to other cities in France. This is thanks to the fact that the city has the highest number of students in France, around 90,000. This dynamic city attracts young Parisians and it's no surprise that it's their top choice for a daily trip or a weekend getaway. If you've already been to Belgium or southern parts of Netherlands, walking through Lille everything will seem familiar. Architecture using red and brown brick, typical Flemish houses with narrow inner courtyards, pubs on the streets, and narrow winding streets in the old town center. General de Gaulle Square, with its Renaissance and Baroque buildings, serves as a Lille's main square and a popular meeting point. You will hardly miss it. Besides that, be sure to visit two churches. Eglise Saint Maurice, a beautiful Gothic church from the 14th century. Notre Dame de la Trelle Cathedral, a 19th century cathedral in neo-Gothic style. Lille is also the hometown of Charles de Gaulle. So if you're interested in his life and his influence on French history, visit his museum. Lille is exceptionally well connected by high-speed rail, with Paris and other French cities by the TGV trains with London, because the Eurostein line passes through the city, and also with Amsterdam in the Netherlands and Cologne in Germany via the Thales line. So it will be easy and fast for you to organize a visit to this beautiful city.
We started our journey from Bordeaux in the southwest and traveling through southern and central France before reaching Lille in the far north. Whether you decide to follow this route or visit any of these cities individually, you'll certainly enjoy their beauty, broaden your horizons, and get to know French history and culture up close. Have a safe journey and please share your impressions and experiences in the comments. Thank you for watching.